things, uh, I heard Scott say, if your boss will pay for it, and I guess I would push back a little to all of you, say, well, if my boss doesn't pay for it, then I'm not going to do it. But you also have to ask, what's the value of a client? He talks about hosting dinners and having an anchor guest. That was Keith who? Keith Perazzi. Yeah, that's who wrote this book, I never even alone. Oh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> um, uh, Keith has this company, I think it's called Blue Light or something like that. But I remember I got this book. And the cool thing was the first time I tried to do it, because my wife wanted to go, oh, we got to have this, and we got to have this. Well, Keith says cornbread and chili. And if you drink, great, have everybody bring the wine. If you don't, however it is, but uh, you set up a tablecloth, gym, such, and this might be a great tool for what you're trying to do. Because, you know, my uncle started out kind of where you were. He was the head of the school board in a town called Big Sandy, 350 people, and worked his way into, he's got a pretty good job now, but same thing, hosting and doing that kind of stuff. So uh, you bring an anchor to the event. And uh, the first one I ever did, it was a guy that wrote a traveling book. So I invited some friends to come to this. I just wanted to practice it. And he had just written a book. It's either traveling or wine tasting. I can't remember what it was, but I just wanted to practice. But it allowed me to invite people to come to that event and practice. Uh, Boise State has something called the Coaches Club. A uh, whole new level, but I think I paid 5000 bucks for it. And here's what I said. I go, hey, would you, this was back when Chris Peterson was the coach. He said, hey, would you like to go to lunch with myself and Chris Peterson? Now, there was also 500 other people in there. But once a month, that's how it's set up. So here was the list. Jim Zamzo went with me, uh, the president, CEO of United Heritage. Uh, there's five or six guys. The only guy that turned me down, I thought I'd bring up, is Molly Alquist. The only person of everybody that I invited and I would say the only one, and I do trade with uh, Zamzos, so I'd say it was almost 100%. And Scott's so smart, he would study this and talk about people eating together and if you buy, so that's outstanding. So let's get back to you guys. What are the excuses going to be? I'm not talking about your excuses, because you've already got those in your head. My client's different, this and that. Let's talk about prospect excuses. This isn't the training topic today, but Jim let us in something that can change your business if you want to own this. So let me hit you with the first one. I don't have time. Okay, so I'll just take that one away from you. Don't have time. By the way, I work for Scott has a brother whose name is Jason Galloway. I think he's a client of yours, OEC. One of you guys here, I think it's a client of. Um, he does the same thing. He and Scott, apparently your dad must have been really good at, at uh, having dinners or something like that. He does the same thing. I have yet to have one, and it's the most amazing thing in the world. I call, now I book lunches for other people. I don't get to go. Hey, want to go to lunch? Yeah, sure. No one ever invites me to lunch. Because we think, what, don't have time. So you guys go ahead and fire away. What are excuses why a prospect couldn't go to lunch? Start the back, Travis. Go to lunch. Yeah, so you're going to invite them to go to lunch. You go, hey, I read this book, never eat, eat alone. What are going to be some of the objections? Okay, well, we put that down. Fair enough, too busy. Let's just keep going down. We'll work our way Idaho through the high line. I already have plans. Okay, have plans. Scott? Oh, we're not allowed to have uh, customers or vendors take us to lunch. Okay, this is a really good That's government. Not allowed. Really. Now, uh, well, it depends. I'm going to hit you with this. Some government it is okay, some it's not. It depends on the personality type. So what personality type probably would say they're not allowed? Slaps. Okay, help me here. Compliance. Sorry. Compliance. I did not, I'm not saying this. Speaking of slaps. <laughs> okay, That's so specific. compliance. Very, very specific rule follower. Okay. So I'll use an example. The, uh, the Boise, uh, I think it's Boise School District. 
So again, helping out your brother, Boise School District, I go, hey, do you want to go out to coffee? Yes, but I have to pay for my own. Okay, don't, they not allowed. So while we we're having coffee, I said, um, hey, I got you a couple of gift cards to here to Starbucks. I know I can't pay for your cup. He goes, oh, this works perfectly because at the end of the year, I have all of the people that work in the, my janitors and cafeteria, all those people come in and we give them all a pat on the back and we give them gift cards. So every time I go with him, Jim, I give him gift cards. I say, these are for the cafeteria, the janitor. So there's always a way, I, I call it a workaround, but it depends because remember, that's a form of an objection. These are all forms of objections, not to lunch, but to doing business with you. Mr. Palmer. Uh, spouse is sick. <clears throat> okay, spouse is sick. The reason I put it in blue, I've never heard of that one, but I like it. Okay. I'm sure that's what's happened to you because you wouldn't have said it right. All right. And jumping, Jim? Don't want to be pinned down. Okay. Tell me more. Um, don't want to be pinned down. What uh, What exactly did they mean by, were they wrestlers or? So the coffee I had yesterday morning, uh, the specific was, you know, you really don't want to get stuck in this particular little niche. So if I go out to lunch with you, then everybody's going to expect me to go out to lunch with you or a coffee with you. Oh, good. They're going to, you're going to be the only one, and then everybody will start asking. Okay, good. So Outstanding, Jim. Way, way to clarify, clarify, clarify. So these are all your obstacles, and these are no different than I have no money. It's not in my budget. We already have our training. We have all those pieces that go through here. But be aware of them. What I found works best is early morning for people that are really busy. You go to breakfast. So a friend of mine started uh, Thornton Oliver Keller, Peter Oliver, well, very well connected. Peter will meet me for breakfast as long as I'm ready to get up at 6 a.m. Now my other client over at ESI, he's always busy. But I happen to know in the summertime, his, his boy goes to a lot of football camps. So I say, how about I meet you? So this Friday and Saturday, there's a, they call it a, it's called this, it used to be called the Patriot Passing Camp. Centennial put it on, now it's Rody's Truck Stop or something. But guess where we're going to meet? At the Passing Camp. And then always bring a piece of value. So one thing I would, and, and this is, I, I try to think it's research or stealing, but this is stuff Keith's told me. What is something you can bring as value? I don't want to overdo it, but when I take you to lunch, I might happen to give you a copy of my book. And I also came across this old rock climbing artifact. Apparently, it's a tool that the early rock, rock, rock climbers use. So something that's that unexpected surprise. And remember, that just transitions right into this value, V-A-L-U-E. So they won't go to lunch with you unless they perceive value. So number one, you have to validate your solution. Validate your solution. You do that with testimonials, or as I call them, testimonials. Video testimonials work best. Add an artifact. Okay, what are you providing to your client? Am I at my artifact? That happens to be my book. I don't carry cards. I carry, now you might say, well, Dave, I don't have a book. Okay, there's other stuff you guys can have. You will lose your customers if they don't perceive value. So they have to perceive value or you will lose them. Okay, unexpected surprise. I'll give you a quick example because I'm doing this for uh, United Heritage on Friday. Um, they're pretty, I own the rights to the State River Stampede. I think you won one year, Mora Bandana. Do you remember that year you went? Uh, and, and one of the things, one of my sponsors is United Heritage. So last night they were they were unveiling their night shows and all this and this guy's a trick roper. Okay, so I went to the trick roper and I said, "Hey, would you do this same show for me Friday at noon?" Uh, yeah. What would you charge me? Now remember, they, would you do it for a hundred bucks? Okay. Called United Heritage and said, "Hey, I'm going to come do some rope tricks. Have your whole team in the lobby." So Jim, you can see this. I'm going to be doing this and. And I go, wait a minute, there must be an expert. But that's the unexpected surprise. Because I have to know all their CEOs, everybody's in from all their locations. Remember, this all ties into your lunch. And Scott said, hey, Dave, 
build me something that I can do when I go to lunch. And the last one is, if you don't manage expectations, you're going to be in trouble because, Jim, today's value added is tomorrow's expectation. So we don't want them to be like Pavlov's dog. Hey, and you guys will remember this. Want to go to lunch? Yeah, we want to go to the highest priced sushi place in Napa and never buy anything. Ring a bell to anybody? Okay. That's okay if we're going to the highest price, if the decision makers there were ready to say yes. So there's a quick By the way, that person it. did buy a class. Okay. Great. Did it pay for the. Uh, it was a pizza fee, it was sushi fee. Another fee? Yeah. We used to call them sticky fees, but then he bought. So we have names. Right? If somebody goes to lunch, we can't remember their name. When the Pizza Pete guy was our first lunch. He went to the, uh, what's the pizza place there in the village? Oh, the, 30, the $30 personal pizza place? Yeah. No, no, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's Italian. Yeah, the 10 bucks, yeah, mozzarella. Yeah. It's a nice place. Uh, what's it called? Well, anyway, that Google place. Villa Eats and Village. I got at least be able to say that. Starts as a G. Grimaldi's. Grimaldi's. All right, Grimaldi's. Okay, and then the other one was Big Al, and Big Al was the one that spent $40,000. So the irony is, I'll leave you guys with this, is as Scott said that, I'd say, Scott, why aren't you doing more of it? Because we had a sales guy that worked here. We calculated if he would do six lunches a month, six lunches a month, he would generate $1 million more dollars. And when we asked, why don't you do it, it was... So I don't really Because it's work. Yeah. That's, that's why. Got it's it. uh, work and you have to get out of your zone a little bit to invite people. So Jim, great great piece today. Certainly we didn't plan on uh, getting out of tra uh, getting off track. Um, sorry for you viewers that saw my billboard head here, but you can work with that. I'll hit you with one other one that ties yourself into this. Book Yourself Solid by Michael Pork. So these books kind of go hand in hand. So if you're a book reader, and only 10% of us are, those are two really good books for you to, to tie together. Uh, my wife changed the name of this to Book Yourself Silly, but um, that, that was fine by me. So whatever will work there. Let me grab the lesson, and I'll put that up. Gmail.com. Uh, Travis, what would your takeaway be from Jim's training today, or Jim's... I guess it really wasn't training, sharing good news. What was your takeaway from Jim sharing good news? Um, setting appointments, you mean the setting appointments close to the person you're setting the appointment with? The location, yeah. make sure, nice. That, no. Jim, that was, I mean, I kind of was taking a back seat there. I was like, God dang, that Jim. He's a friggin' Picasso painting pictures as success. So well done, Jim. Uh, let's go to the back, Travis. What was your takeaway from Jim's uh, presentation? Or no, Jim sharing good news. I got to remember that. It made me realize uh, it's a good way to get them out of the office. Mm -hmm. Yes, so it's convenient for them, but to nice so you're at the neutral field think about that we've talked about home fields worth seven points neutral field so good good uh, good uh, feedback on that uh, Travis I was thinking of you when Scott talked about or Jim I can't remember suggesting a place because your lead on your calls nothing's wrong hey I'd like to take you out buy a cup of coffee sometime do your research and um, what the heck's the name of it the chef, chef in the forest or something. It's over behind Bishop Kelly, and it's like hidden in the very back. And um, but chef's what's it called? The chef's hut. Chef's hut. I mean, you really got to know where you're at and what to look for if you can find this thing. But that would be a position. So do a little research on where you're calling. So in this case, hey, uh, is Buck in today? Yeah, I'm in. Hey, Buck, uh, I'd like to take you to lunch. I watched your training. Uh, Want to meet over at the Sonic? So whenever I invite Scott to go to lunch, there's one of three places. Sonic used to be called Steve's. Now it's called Tandy's. And then the other one would be Express Cafe. Now, I don't know if those are his favorite cafes. I know he happens to like bacon. 
but notice the proximity of those three places. And I would tell you nine times out of 10, roughly, he goes with. So do your research. So if you invite him to coffee, make sure, hey, I'd take you to Black Rock right across the street. Okay. What was your takeaway from Jim sharing good news? Uh, I probably need to get more prospective clients to emergency meetings. Okay. So those are your prospects. Get them to lunch. Yeah, because I, I typically do meetings with my, my new clients and current clients with lunches and stuff, but probably get some more out there. So. Sure. Now, are you a note taker in here, or how do you take your notes? So do yeah. you, okay, so write this thing, write this down. Do one thing every day that scares you to death. So if taking somebody, now remember, I'm not saying jump out of a plane if you're afraid of heights, swim if you, a uh, friend is, not anything like that. But this week, by Friday, let us know who's a new person that you invited to lunch. Uh, I shared this with a group, Jim, earlier. There's a world champion cowboy, arguably the best cowboy ever. His name's Trevor Brazil. And last night he was in the arena. And I told my wife, I go, you know, I've always wanted to interview him. And she goes, do one thing that scares you to death. So I climbed up. I said, Mr. Brazil. He goes, call me Trevor. I go, would you do an interview with me? He did four minutes with me. It was cool. And uh, anyhow, not that anybody would know. And I don't expect anybody to know or care. But it was the one thing that scared me, to, and it made me stronger, made me stronger, got me out of that. So challenge yourself. By Friday, I'm going to book a lunch with somebody that I don't know. Okay. And then, Scott, what was your takeaway from Jim sharing good news? Uh, just a good reminder to be active mm. when you're calling people and thinking about it. So actually think. If, if you think it's a lunch possibility, think about it in advance and come up with locations. Sometimes we just like pick up the phone. I just a lot of times, all right, I'm getting to get this guy. Pick up the phone and call him without having necessarily thought through, okay, well, is this a good candidate for lunch? Maybe I should uh, maybe I should invite him. And if I do, what are three locations that, uh, that, would work. that I could offer? Good. Yeah, my takeaway for you, not that I'm supposed to have, was when you said, God, I need to get back to doing that. So maybe you have been doing it, but I just heard you say that. So play that. So Jim, will you remind me when we get done at 2.30, we take our break. I'm going to try to book a lunch appointment. I don't know this guy. I'm scared of this guy. Uh, and I'm telling you for real, you guys can hold me accountable. So um, when we get done, I'll try to book a live lunch appointment. All right, our topic today, if you're uh, watching this uh, in uh, on your big screen or you're here, why do 50% of salespeople quit on the prospect after one call? These are actually the national stats, 51%. So they make a call, they either get a no, they get a voicemail, they get a call me back later, anything. Why do 50% of salespeople quit on the prospect after the first call? So the beauty of this, Mr. Palmer, is I don't know why. I need your help. So that being said, I'm going to type and you tell me why you think people quit after the first call. And for the record, we're going to go around the room. So uh, you can say anything you want because I'm just going to type it in. Uh, lazy. Lazy. Jim. Scared. Scared. There would be me. Uh, Scott. No system. No system. The pride of... Is it Cutbank or Shelby? Hey, there's a cowboy from Cutbank tonight. I got to ask you if you know him, by the way. Probably. What is, is that his name? Probably. Okay, I'll hit you when I'm done. I got because I wanted to ask you who's this cowboy from. Uh, okay. All right. See, to me, that's a badge of honor, but some people probably wouldn't like it. If somebody called me Big Sandy, I'd really like it. Big Ooh, no, 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 no. I didn't call you Shelby. You're cut bank. Easier not to make the call. Easier not to. Um, here's mine. Then we'll go around one more team. We mind read. They must not like me because they didn't call me back. I'm bothering them. Okay. Travis. Or no, let's go, let's go this way. No, let's let's double up. T squared. <laughs> I 
All right, we'll come back to you. I haven't heard back, so just hold on. Are you waiting for them to call us? Don't want to be a pest. Okay, I'll go back here. Pest. All right, Scott, what was yours? Mine goes along with Travis's. Uh, it's the idea that we wouldn't want people, we get head trash about, well, we wouldn't, I wouldn't want to insult that way, so they must not. They're, they're, they're just like me. Good. All right. TP? Uh, forgetful. Follow up. Okay. Back Fair enough. With no system, okay. Good. And Jim, wrap us up. Um, I don't want to sell. Don't want to upset them or make them mad. <clears throat> Great stuff. Um, Scott, uh, i got to give him the credit for this along with myself because I can't give all the credit, I'm dominant. We came up with this idea called green eggs and ham wine. So Jim, kind of give us the, the, the snapshot if you said, hey, read Dr. Seuss's book. The best sales books in the world, if you guys want to know, and you don't even have to look these up on Amazon, is Green Eggs and Ham and The Little Train That Could. Okay, best thing. So Little Train That Could says, I think I can, I know I can, I did. That's about attitude. Green Eggs and Ham says, tell me more. I'm going to keep asking you until I get a yes. Okay. So in the book Traction, which Scott, this is like a plug for Scott today. In the book Traction, Scott was kind enough to invite one of my clients in, which I guess now is one of your clients. And um, the book says, in order for people to remember stuff, we've got to keep telling them seven times. we got to tell them seven times. I've been accused of this in my training. Well, Dave, it's the same old stuff. I wonder when the New England Patriots run the same play over and over, if they go up to Coach Bill Belichick and go, Coach, this blocking and tackling is the same old stuff. So I gotta tell people this seven times when they come in to help them remember. The Green Eggs and Ham line says, and please write this down, what are you doing between now and the time they're getting ready to buy? What are you doing between now and the time they are getting ready to buy? Go ahead. Could you repeat that part about the, the seven? I'm just taking a note of Okay. It. You have to tell a person seven times? Tell a person seven remember. times before they remember it. So, a lot of times when we huddle up with the team, think of your kids. How many times do I have to tell you? Seven, Seven times. Now, in this case, I only need to tell you guys six times. So I told you once, what are you doing between now and the time that they're ready to buy? So i got to tell you six times. Now, Scott, to give you the why behind the what, I know you don't care, but there are some compliance that listen to training occasionally. In broadcasting, there's two things called frequency and reach. So frequency is the number of times the commercial runs. Reach is how many people you reach. So, Jim, in your business, where you're trying to, to win an office, frequency and reach is very important. And we have to reach somebody seven times. If there's 5,000 messages every day, which now, Travis, you could probably look at that between search engine optimization, all this, probably 15,000 messages every day. So let's pretend there's 15,000 messages every day, and here's a 30-second commercial that says, I'm Jim Truman, and I approve this ad. Okay? We don't hear it the first time. Here's the second time. Paid for by the people who elect Jim Truman. I'm Jim Truman, and I approve this ad. That's the second time. We have to hear it seven times before we hear. I want to change the way the Boise School Board does business. Our children can't add. They can't spell. I'm here to change it. Paid for by the department to elect Jim Tuman. I'm Jim Tuman, and I paid for this. Now we heard the ad, but it takes seven times. So that's where that comes about, what that is. So here's the stats. 51% of people quit after the first sales call. Now, a lot of people will say, well, Dave, that's not true. I don't know what you're talking about. So here's why. Uh, they're lazy. They're scared. They have no system. They think no is forever. It's easier not to follow up. We mind read. We feel like we're a pest. We haven't heard back from them or they didn't call me back. 
we didn't want, I mean, we don't want people to sell us, so why on earth would they want it? I don't like that. I don't like that cold call stuff. I don't like to, I don't like to go to lunch. I'm a vegetarian, I don't want to go. Um, forget, oh, no, no uh, rebuff oh, on the family, okay. He's considering becoming a carnivore. <clears throat> Are you coming home? I'm, I'm coming home, I'm coming Okay, only a carnivore. Only a carnivore. So sidebar, his significant other only eats what plastics that can be recycled or what is it? No animal product at all. Yeah, no animal product. So it's a lot of fun when he goes, honey, we're going to the Texas Roadhouse. All right, forget to follow up. We don't want to upset them or make them mad. So that's back to the 51% quit after the first sales call. Now we're getting a little better on our odds. 30% quit after the second call. Now, Dave, how do you know that, or, or how come? Okay. Remember, i got to tell you this seven times. They're lazy, they're scared, no system. So it all comes up the same way on the third call. Now, here's the good news. So here's the good news is 80% of sales happen after touch number eight. That's the good news. So you have little tab marks. Here's touch one, here's touch number two. So what are you doing between call one and eight? What are you doing before call one? Now most people do this. Hope they call me back, I hope they do. I hope I get the commander, whatever that might be. So Jim, that'd be kind of like you, hope, pardon me, uh, too much iced tea, hoping to, to become the school board. What is it, you wanna be the chairman or just get on? Just get on. I hope they elect me. Well, that's not going to work. You're going to have to knock. I'm speaking of getting out of your comfort zone. It's going to be the best thing for sales is knocking on doors. Okay. Uh, you need to get, what was the name of the key? What was it called? The bat buster. You need to get the bat buster. There you go, Jim. What's your bat buster? Okay. What gets measured gets done. Okay. Real simple. What's get measured get done. If I were to go around the room and proxy you guys, how many calls you make, for the most part, it's going to be an estimate. It's going to be an estimate. However, what happens here in your car, Travis? Now, some dominance might go, I got three and a half more miles, which, by the way, my car reads that right now. I got 30 miles to go, and I got like 29 miles I got ahead, but I got 30 miles worth of gas. I'm not taking into account it's 110 degrees, it's probably going to evaporate. But what happens when that comes on, even for dominant day? <laughs> Got to go get gas. So what gets measured gets done. So call number one. Your only mission in call number one, because remember what we've trained, conversation, disc personality, and clear next step. Call number one says find out a name. Okay, so in this case, I'm calling Leap Fox Learning. I find out it's Buckwheat. Or, okay, I find out it's Buckwheat. I'm going to call again. But this time, I don't really believe it's Buckwheat. So I'm going to make call them. Is Buckwheat in? No, Buckwheat's not in. Call back on Friday. Well, Jim, I'm persistent, so I'm going to make call number two. But this time, I'm going to go through the accounting department. I'm going to say I'm a little lost here. Accounting department, remind me, and, and I'm talking to Barb now, remind me real quick. I assume you're the decision maker. When I talked to the team, they said, ask for you. Oh, no, no. And I know Barb happens to be steady compliant. Uh, that, that gentleman named Scott. Finally, on my third call, I get Scott on the phone. I get him on the phone. I know he's a D. I let him win. Um, and then, just for fun, I'm going to send him a thank you note. And in his case, I find out that he has, uh, I was going to say four kids. Don't you have five now? Just teasing him. So he's got four kids. I find that out, and I can either go at the top end, Okay, I can go the Palmer or I can go the other end, Gunnage. So either way. So I might, I might just, but I got to do something to kind of grab his attention and go, well, what? Whoa, this guy knew that I climbed rocks? Uh, what the heck? Uh, this guy knows I'm going to Disney? Uh, what the heck? This guy knows I'm from, you know, all those type of things. What the heck? So I got to do something that's a little bit of a what the heck. But the easy thing, if you guys go, Dave, I'm not wired that way. I give you 100 books. Giftology, thinker, toys. I'm really good at quoting books. But here's what I have to do. Handwritten thank you. No more complicated than that. Handwritten thank you. Okay? Touch number five. Jim, value. Now remember, part of touch number five is one, two, three, four. There's five things in five. 
How do you validate your solution? Testimonials. What do you add as an artifact? Uh, our handbook on five ways people need to, or you could say they need to hear it six times. Okay? You, 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 they don't go to lunch with you, they do this one. Uh, you're pinning me down. My spouse is sick. I'm not allowed. If they don't perceive value, they're not going to go to lunch with you. It's just cut to the chase. Okay? People tell me I can't go to lunch with you because you're not allowed. But the flip side is, I go to some people that aren't, okay, you pay for lunch, they still want to go, and then I can add the unexpected surprise. All right, so touch five, call number six, finally I get an appointment, and an appointment is defined as I'm in their day. It's not swing by on Tuesday, hey, I'm in every other month, it's I'm in their day plan. Shall I put that pin or pencil? Travis, you don't see anything between now and then that will keep you from coming. My biggest fear is, my biggest fear is that I'll set the appointment up and you'll know, show me. There are a whole bunch of things that go on, okay? Now, call number seven is my second appointment I've got a proposal, but I know I'm not just going to email the proposal. I've got pain, budget, and decision. Pain, budget, decision, and a clear next step. Have you thought about a budget? What does your decision-making process look like? Let's pretend it's a year from now. What would have to happen for you to be pleased with your ID system? So, Jim, we've got pain, budget, decision. We've got a proposal. And we're all good to go on all these things, okay? Next step is, do you want to buy? What would you like to see happen next? How would you like to proceed and the sale? So these are my eight touches, but I've got it so I can track. How many dials every day do I have to make to have a conversation? How many conversations do I have to have every day to get an appointment? How many appointments do I need to get a sale? It's not tremendously difficult, but if we don't track it, remember the rule, Jim, read it to us. Okay, pretty simple. So if you said, well, what are my KPIs or my key performance indicators, or what am I going to measure? So pretty simple here. My number of drop-ins, that could be lunch. My number of phone calls each day, okay? I have to prospect every day. I have to turn prospects into possibilities. That's called an appointment. A probability is a second one, second appointment, and a client's when they say yes. And I always have three times pending. So if my budget for the month is $10,000, I come to Scott and I say, hey, Scott, I have $30,000. Okay, and I'll explain that in a minute. So prospect means drop-ins and dials. In person, on the phone, how many per day? So that's real simple to track your prospect. How many phones? So in the case of Leapbox, you guys spend probably 90% of your time on the telephone. How many dials do you make every day? New dials. Uh, Microtech, yours could be drop-ins. I don't know how many cold calls you make, but that's real important to keep track of, okay? Now we jump to possibility. Number of appointments each week. That's not a swing by and hope I'm here. You're in their day planner, okay? This is an appointment. There's nothing really magical about that is you're an appointment, they show up for it. Probability, how many second appointments do you have? Remember, the second appointment includes pain. Surface pain, what's causing the pain, and the cost of the pain. Budget, have you thought about a budget? What does your decision-making process look like? And no, I'm not just going to email your proposal. I'm going to sit with you. Jim, in your case, you can do it on, what are we on, Scott, right now? What's our broadcast uh, forum? Zoom. Zoom. Okay, as Aretha Franklin once said, who's Zooming who? So you can put that together and do it on Zoom. Okay, put the, do a Zoom meeting, but please don't email them. And it could be a demo, right? Okay? You wanna sit in, I think we used to do that management training. We would invite somebody to come in. By the way, this class is open and I haven't seen a lot of guests here. It could be because the training's so bad or we forgot to invite people. And for um, Microtech, I'm offering this up to you guys. If there's a client or a prospect that you think it'd add value to them to say, hey, why don't you come in and sit in? I'm, I'm tired of listening to the guy. Why don't you come in and listen? You might learn something. We're happy to, to say, hey, the day's on us. 
if you think it would add value. It may not. You may not work with companies where sales are important. Some, some that's not important for them, okay? Probability, client. They say yes. Uh, Jim, remember this, you're only as good as your next two steps. Delivery, follow up, and then also that includes an account review. Today I called six clients that had done over $100,000 with this particular, I shouldn't say client, yeah, I guess they were clients, but the client I was working with, they had six clients that they had last touched in 2015, and each client had done over $100,000 with them. They hadn't talked to them since. Now we all go, I, can't, I just can't believe that. 81% of leads are not followed up, and that includes your current clients, all right? Last but not least, three times pending. So pending says, pipeline that you are projecting to close in the month. Now, I've heard you guys talk about uh, could be clients, it may not be dollars. So if you need to close two clients a month, because remind me what your goal was before your six month day, what is that? Six clients in a year. In year four, is that right? So when's your year in? September. So your pending would be, so you have two, you need to have six clients that, not just six clients, that on a scale of one to 10, there's seven or better. So let's pretend Jim's a, a prospect. Jim, on a scale of one to 10, 10 being you're gonna work with Microtech, six being near the middle of the fence, one being, please don't call me anymore, where are you? Not a six and a half. Six and a half, so Jim probably wouldn't go into that bucket. Travis, scale of one to 10, 10 being you're good, good, one being you're not. Uh, 13. You're the 13. Okay, credit card. Now, he could be an influencer. Remember, he's misleading me on purpose, so I'd say, why didn't you say a 12, or why didn't you say 10? Well, I just, it's even more than a 10. We're definitely going to do that. Yeah. Can I go ahead and grab your credit card? I don't have to. Okay, perfect. All right, we'll keep going. Scale of one to 10, 10 being you're going to buy, one being you're not. Eight. Eight. So now I have two, but remember, how many do I need? Three times spending, three times two is six. So that's what you've got, so you've got to have that in there because if you only have two, something's gonna happen. Somebody's not gonna have their credit card, somebody's not feeling well, somebody's gonna lie, all that type of stuff. So three times spending, conversely, do either of you two have a budget or is it just a call number? Like a money goal? Yeah, yeah. so what's your money goal? Or let's use July. Uh, <coughs> 15,000. 15,000, where are you at right now? Okay, so three times pending of 6,000 would be what? 18,000. 18, awesome. So you have to have $18,000 in your pipeline that on a scale of 1 to 10 is 7 or better in order to hit your number. Now you're running up against one factor is uh, by the what is today's date? It doesn't, what is it? 17th. By the 15th of the month, you need to be at 75% of your goal or you're not going to hit your goal. Back to life. You're not going into your month. It's, so so you've got your work cut out. You might have to work on a Saturday or Sunday. But now you've got it. So, so don't come to Scott. So here's what it sounds like. Scott asked me how I'm doing on my budget. Are you doing on your budget? I've only got 6,000 to go. And I've got one client, and if they do security minus plus, minus plus, they're going to charge them $6,000. I think they're going to do it. They're from Amex. What's your strategy if that would work? Well, this is going to work. They know the kernel. Okay. Well, then you want to just call them right now and get their credit card? All right. So do you see what I mean? Now, they might do it. They might do it this way. Pretty good chance, but now let's uh, let's position it this way. Scott can go over each client. So I have ten thousand dollars pending. He knows he needs to help you get uh, no different than I'm going to help you get two more clients, and we can go each one and say scale of one to ten. We know they're all at seven or better. What do we need? And as the case was, uh, we did this exercise, Jim. Why the lady says I can give you a commitment to uh, a letter of intent. I just can't sign the document. Fair enough. And we went from there. So that was real important. So remember on your three times. So remember, most important question to ask your prospect. Now I ask people, um, 
I said, do you know what the most important question is to ask your prospect in the month? And nobody knew the answer. So I wrote the answer here. Okay, so Travis, if you've got a prospect and you expect them to close this month, what's the most important question to ask? On a scale of one to ten, where are you? Okay, and then make sure you put the parameters. Jim taught us some coaching on this, and he said 10, 10 is always hot, 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 close. One is always cold, 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 beat it. Now Jim happens to be a steady, so did you notice I put a six in there? Did you hear who's at? 6.5. What I love about you, Jim, right on the mic. All right? So a lot of stuff packed in there, but real quick, Travis in the back row, what is the green eggs and ham that I had you write down? What's the one message? Green eggs and ham, please write this down. What was it? Right? Not to say something seven times. Okay, close. I mean, I did say that, but I said, write this down. Green Eggs and Ham says. What are you doing between now and when? Okay. And when they buy. So let's just pretend Randy said, hey, what'd you guys learn? Here's what we learned today. What are you doing between now and the time they're going to buy? What's that mean? 50% of salespeople quit after the first call. How come? They're lazy. They don't care. They this, they that. We've got a whole list of them. 30% quit after the second call. However, 80% of people make call or say yes on the eighth touch. So what I discovered today is I need a system that says one through eight. What's one through eight look like? Now, make sure you guys know that doesn't mean doing this. This was call one. This was call two, call three, call four. That's not what I'm saying. That's kind of like banging your head against the wall. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. I like, Bang. like I did that. It's banging your head up. Call one is I call Jim. He says buckwheat. Call two, I go through the back door and say, I'm a little lost here. Call three is I get him on the phone. Touch four is a thank you note. Touch four, touch five is I get an appointment. Touch six is added value. Touch seven is second appointment. I've got pain, budget, decision. Touch eight is it's time to buy. And there we go from there. It's not real difficult, but here's why it doesn't happen. And the beauty of this training today was you guys reinforced it. Hey, we're thinking about other stuff. We didn't do this. We didn't do that. We don't want to upset them. We forget to follow up. We don't want people to sell to us. I have not heard back. Test. This is all stuff that's true because perception, and that's your perception, is reality. Okay? Jim. I typically don't start with you, so I won't. Scott, what would be your takeaway from the training? So, um, a good reminder that we shouldn't get frustrated after um, if things don't work out on the first contact because we've got seven more to do before, and that's just before the average person um, says yes, that's just the average, so we may have more to do, but very few times you get success after number one. Okay, outstanding, and remember I did the live demonstration, make sure you're not doing the same, hey, I'm calling Captain Stubing, call him again, I'm calling Captain Stubing, I call him, don't, don't do it, even if you say, hey, I used the lost, I mean, you better call a different captain, or maybe call Colonel Plank. But you've got to find another piece to go with that. All right? Jim, what's your takeaway? So it's a little bit of a spin on why do we quit after one call and the we're too scared or we're too lazy is, you know what? You can't lose what you don't have. So if you quit after one call, you're not going to get to the eight more. You're not going to get sales. Okay, and for those of us, probably, I mean, what do you mean when you say you can't lose when you don't have? What's that mean? Um, last week, we talked about goals. My goal is to have one contact, one, what do we call it, one meaningful. good contact, meaningful contact yeah. at each base. I can't do that if I don't call the base. Oh. So I can't lose what I don't already have. Okay, good, Jim. So think of this in terms of, because we're all men here, okay? 
if we are in sixth grade and we ask a beautiful woman out, we ask her out, go, well, she'd never go out with you. Well, you can't lose what you don't have, right? What's the worst thing that's going to happen? She's going to say yes, and then divorce you, and you're going to pay alimony. So, there you go. Wait, so we're in sixth grade? Yeah, I know. Yeah, sixth her, name was, her name was Chanel. Oh, never mind. That's a different story. Different story. All right, deep um, moment. For me, I like the value, it's specifically the added artifact and unexpected surprise. Yeah. Because I think that, like, with a lot of the clients that I work with, I should be taking a little bit more time to research them and get a good idea of, you know, food places near them, going all the way back to Jim's lesson, and then what artifacts I can have and what unexpected sure. surprise they would appreciate. So a good thing with, with Scott is he really likes colorful socks. So I always see this stuff that pop on Facebook, but that'd be a great, because you just observe that, and that's something you like. So the other one's bacon, right? So if you want an unexpected, you know, I don't know. I found these socks are on your ass. I've only worn them twice. Uh, what's your take? Uh, along with the persistence and not stop after call, do one thing every day that's good. Like that. What are you going to do? Tell me the three of the names you're going to do. The first one that pops in your mind for me, when I'm calling somebody I'm scared to death of, it's always go to Grant Peterson. I mean, just because I, I call, you know. So in your case, who's that person that comes to your head? I don't know yet, but I'll have one by the end of the week. Okay. Sounds good. All right. Any for you, or are you good? Did I? Yeah. The system follows the system. Okay. Like that. And you're All right. Uh, Jim, thank you very much. The lead in today, outstanding. I don't think the training matched the lead-in, so they call that upstaging. So when you guys do your lead-in, just don't be so damn good. Okay, it makes me look bad. That being said, who's leading in next week? Uh, Travis, in the back, will you lead in for us next week? And just play back, just so we don't forget. What are the expectations? What is uh, the topic, or what? Share a, a sales technique right. that has worked for you, or that you would like. To be able to get to work for you that you know that maybe that you taught that you'd like to dig into and, and uh, you'd like to start using or a success story a sale uh, share a success story okay. where's danny boy well, or, oops. say again or vacation. oh vacation nice hopefully went to joseph a friend of mine went there last year so really nice. Nice. let's come back at eight um, and then jim remind me i'll make that call when i get back say, you okay you remind come me. back at eight Back in eight minutes, we'll make some lunch appointments. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
I didn't bring any corn dogs, sorry. But if somebody wants a drink of mine, I got the Route 61. And I think I'm almost over pneumonia. Yeah, Kelsey wants to Yes, sir. I need you before we start. Okay. Um, my daughter, I'm going
Well, yeah, I mean, anything's better than what I've got. <laughs> All right, Jumpin' Jim, going to start out. Let's see if I've got this here. Uh, let's see what we got. I'm looking up the guy's number. Okay, so the purpose of this call is our mission today is we're, we're going to book lunch appointments. Um, let's see what the hell. Who sent all Nate did? N-A-T-E. Dave, are you making a call? Yeah, I'm looking up the number right now. I did not come prepared. Oh, this is the one of the, of the person you're afraid of. Yeah. We don't believe that because we're not afraid of everyone. Mm, I don't know about that. Okay, Roger is his name. Well, let me tell you when I got this text. Uh, June 28th. <laughs> so you see how long I've been putting it off. 991. Five seven two eight two oh eight. Yes, I okay, so the purpose of my call is twofold. The purpose is one is I want to book this appointment. I'm doing one thing that scares me to death, and I'm doing live training uh, because we want to try to book some appointments. My process, okay, I haven't quite figured out my process yet, but I knew my payoff is I get a booked appointment. I think my process is going to be what I call the director of first impression. And then I'm also going to say Charlie told me to call. So these are the um, uh, these are the stinker stations. The client is ESI Construction, and um, I'm building a training program for them that's called Lunch L U N C H. So I'm trying to take their 10 best customers out to lunch. L is what do I learn about them? What did I find out that's unexpected? So I have this an acronym that's there. I'm not going to tell Roger that. Um, never met Roger before, but he's kind of the construction manager. And then here's the caveat, Travis. Roger doesn't like ESI. Okay, so I'm just letting you know, Roger, he has to because the owner, Charlie Jones and Neil Nelson are best friends. So he's doing something that he doesn't want to do because the owners are best friends. So you're calling the guy at the Jackson's food stores for not Jackson? Did I say Jackson Stinker? Stinker. You said right. that. I, okay. That's my bad. I just got to make sure because that's that wouldn't want to lead it that way. Uh, <laughs> whoopsie, whoopsie. <laughs> I'm assuming Rogers either a, a high D or a high C. I'm not sure. I got all worked up. I'll probably get a nice one. Let's see if the voicemail gives me any idea of his personality. Call is being forwarded to a short-held voicemail system. Roger Is not available. Okay, so Jim, based on that, what's his personality style? He is an F. Here. 
I was like, come on, Jim. Okay, so you stand. Wait for it. I was like, come on, Jim. Okay, you had asked me a question about playback, what you said about name, and so why would you name? Okay. So the scenario was, you didn't like ESI? But, but here's the conundrum that's in. ESI builds and maintains all stinker locations. Okay. Roger is in charge of maintenance for stinker. Okay. I need to get, because everybody's afraid of him, I need to have lunch with him and say, hey, why don't you like this? So I can't just call and go, hey, I'm, I'm just calling out of the blue. I'm calling for ESI construction. I'm the director of first impression. Charlie Jones, your boss, suggested I reach out to you. So that's what goes into it. All right? Uh, a lot of build up to that. A lot of build up to, well, I'm going to try first. Uh, no message and see how he responds to that. And I'll give him a steady voicemail. While you guys are making calls, I'll go ahead and grab another one that's an architect, but that's in my LinkedIn, so it's just going to take me a minute longer to do that. So what do we got here? Three by two? Is that how we work? Or? Okay. And is our goal today, I can't speak to you two because I don't know, but are you two trying to book lunches or what, what are we trying to have happen? Thomas, should. Yeah. Just find someone on your list that you can invite to lunch. Okay. Andy? Randy would be from Department Records. Yeah. Oh, I would totally. Yeah, that'd be. You could get Randy out to somewhere real nice if you get Randy. Yeah, Burger King, uh, McDonald's, I'll even go Jimmy John's. Now, don't get in the habit of it. Well, let me find my cut bank guy. Oh, Jim must, oh, I thought that was Jim. Okay, Buck Lunick, L-U-N-A-K. Is that who you said earlier? I graduated. All right, what year did he graduate? Can you tell me anything? Did he play football, basketball? Uh, no, he was a wrestler. Okay. He played football when early in high school, and then he focused more on wrestling and rodeo. And oh, wrestling rodeo, or I like that. Are they are they ranchers, or do they yeah. farm winter wheat, yeah, or? Got a ranch out south towards Browning. Okay, and ranch, but not a farm. So they're ranchers. Yeah. Okay. What's the, I watched the. He's on Spotted Pup tonight. He's five eight, one hundred and seventy eight pounds. He's put on a lot of weight. Well, I don't know what to tell you. Maybe that's why he's a uh, pretty good uh, airbag right? See, I did a little research here. <laughs> Thanks, bro. Jim, quit calling. What is Jim? Want to hear a high I name? Shady Tree Etherton. His first name is Shady, his middle name is Tree. Okay, these calls sound very familiar.
Uh, yeah, will you let her know that Travis called? And uh, let her take my number as well. That's 208-813-0036. Yeah, that's right. And you said she's going to be in all day today? Maybe I'll give her a call in the morning. Yeah, Now, do you have her cell? There must have been a reason you didn't ask for it. Uh, yes, there isn't. Okay, no worries. I mean, you went into great actor mode. That's why I thought you were going to. So it's like, ah, uh, ah, uh, and I thought, remind me her cell. Then you didn't do that. And then you go, ah, oh, she's going to be, remind me her. So I thought you were going to that. So just don't forget. Uh, I 